one of the center's biggest decisions and also its most debated decision to abrogate Article 370 and take away Kashmir's special status is now before the Supreme Court. I'm Barkhadat, you're with the Mojo Story. In a few moments from now, we'll be introducing a very special newsmaker on the program today, People's Conference leader Sajad Lohan. For those with short memory, Mr. Lohan at one time was a separatist. He was one of the few separatists or rather one of the first separatists to move in the, into the electoral mainstream. But the 370 debate has changed politics as we understand it in Kashmir. The Supreme Court is now actually after a gap of two years hearing the petition before it. The center has argued that Kashmir today is transformed, that the street violence which once used to be a staple of everyday life in the Kashmir Valley is now a thing of the past. The Supreme Court has clarified that the center's new submissions are not relevant to the original case before the Supreme Court, which is to deal with the constitutional question. Was the manner in which 370 was abrogated in Kashmir legally, legally legitimate or not? To place this question and ask several of our own questions, let's welcome to the broadcast now Sajad Lone. Uh, Mr. Lone, of course, as I mentioned, um, and, and you know, people often have short memories these days. Uh, I take all of you back to 2002 uh, when Sajad Lone, then a separatist, first dipped his toe into the waters of India's electoral democracy, taking part with proxy candidates in the elections in that year. Much has happened from 2002 to 2023, uh, where we stand today, uh, Sajad. Uh, let me start uh, actually by asking you to talk a little bit about the significance of this 370 petition before the Supreme Court. You described it to be one of the most significant decisions that the judiciary of India will ever have to take. Uh, go ahead with your thoughts today. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I really think that it is going to be one of the most uh, challenging situations for the Supreme Court, not because of the legality of it, but of a certain situation. We live today in highly polarized times, and uh, judiciary at the end of the day comprises of humans, and humans are not totally immune uh, to emotions, and that to mass emotions. For the Supreme Court to hear this at this stage is certainly momentous and a very difficult decision and a difficult challenge as well, which I'm hopeful they will hopefully be able to overcome. Uh, you know, you make a reference to the mass emotion. The fact of the matter is that there was, as it turned out, a widespread support for the abrogation of 370 outside of uh, the Kashmir Valley. And, and some of that support came from non-BJP parties as well. As a politician today, uh, how do you contend with that mass support? One of the comments you made recently was, we must not, we as Kashmir politicians, must not irritate, irritate sort of the, 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 you know, the people of India today. What did you mean by that? You see, we should not incite the people. That's the biggest thing. And we have also have to understand that at the end of the day, uh, the one lesson that I have come out with in the last three or four years is that people of India matter. You cannot go on the TV, start abusing them, inciting them. Because at the end of the day, uh, it will be, um, you know, in, in a democracy at the end of the day, uh, it will be the majoritarian uh, viewpoint which will prevail. And I'm not talking of the legal aspect of it. I'm not talking of the constitutional aspect of it. But I'm talking about that uh, that polarized um, situation that you have. Now let's look at Article 370. As I said, slandered beyond recognition, disfigured, unrecognizable. What is it? Any basic... Not not, not by the BJP, but over the years. Yeah, over the years. All of them, yeah. It's, it was a favorite punching bag. And any class 12 political science student will tell you that it is a basic form of federalism wherein uh, uh, power is shared between the state and the center. The competencies of the center are earmarked and uh, are, are delineated and separate from that of the uh, provincial government. This has been going on for 100, 200 years, wherein uh, the state and the center, they share powers. So this one form of federalism was given a name, it's Article 370, it's this. I'm not worried because uh, I will tell you what, is that for me, nothing is the end of the world. This is a phase, one phase will be followed by another phase. But the way the world is moving, not only in India, across the world, the, uh, you know, the demands for loose federalism or more powers for provinces is going to get shriller 
you know, in the next four or five decades. So I never see anything as an end to it. But I think that now time has come. We should stop making statements which irritate the people of India. We should leave it to the judiciary, have full faith in judiciary, because you cannot do anything apart from judiciary. Rhetoric apart, you know, it's either the parliament or the judiciary where you can argue your case. There is no other forum. So, so you is... believe you believe the Article 370 debate is essentially a debate about Indian federalism. Yeah, of course, it is about Indian federalism. Of course, it is. And where in Kashmir happened to be one part of it uh, in this particular context. But you have other things like in Karnataka, you have a flag. That's also a form of federalism. In Himachal, they don't allow non-Himachal people to buy land in certain areas or in all the areas. That's a form of federalism. That's something which the constitution allows you. And I don't see anything wrong in it. But I don't want to go and now convince people that we were wrong, right and you were wrong. So it is in the court of law. Let them take a call on it. So far, it does seem very encouraging the way uh, Supreme Court has taken it. And I think we need to sit back and facilitate them in making a correct decision, in making the best decision. You gave an example of Karnataka and Himachal Pradesh. Most recently, there's also the example of the Northeast where BJP yeah. leaders are saying a uniform civil code, if it comes, if it comes, uh, will not apply. So there are many regions of India which have a special status constitutionally granted, uh, not just Kashmir. Uh, but of course, the center has argued that there's a particular uh, law and order, a national security context to Kashmir. And one of the things they've argued in their new affidavit, which the Supreme Court has said it will not concern itself with, but still I want to quote from it, is is, is how much Kashmir has transformed. The Kashmir of today is unrecognizable when you compare it, I'm paraphrasing, uh, to before 370. Uh, they've also said street violence, the, you know, which was which was supported and fueled by terrorists and secessionists, this is their language, not mine, um, is now a thing of the past. Do you, do you believe, do you agree that Kashmir is better after the abrogation of 370? Because that's the central argument that the center is making in the Supreme Court. No, it certainly is not better. You know, people don't have any redressal. We don't um, have a we don't have a democracy. We don't have elected representatives. Law and order certainly is better. There is no doubt about it. But that's not only because they have come to power or they have a strong iron face. These are also issues which are external. You know, uh, your main uh, you know um, uh, maybe the uh, the overall situation has changed. But yes, they also have. But then, you know, without dignity, I don't think there is anything people would like without dignity. I don't so law and that. order, hang on, law and order is better, but the sense of being electoral participants in the future of Kashmir, of Jammu and Kashmir is not better. You see, I'll tell you one thing. Um, <laughs> there were the other day, I... I I, somebody gave me figures about how many tourists have come. And I said, who released them? And they said, the government. I said, did they include themselves in the tourist list or not? So the point being is that these are people who are from outside JNK. Uh, you cannot single out JNK as a, as a place which has not done well, where the law and order was bad, you know, and that they should be governed by people who are not domicile, who don't have domicile in JNK. So that, I think, is not good. Uh, no state in India would like that. I don't think any state would like that. You have had law and order problems in, in across um, many other states in India. So I, I think that is something. Uh, Has anything you know, changed for the better? Has anything changed for the better after the abrogation um, uh, of, of the special status? Not that I see. As I told you, is that, you know, uh, nobody here uh, these days, I mean, say, we don't say anything. We just sit back and observe. They say we are doing good. They say we are doing very good. We just sit back and observe. As I said, there's not something very visible. Uh, and I will repeat again. Assume for a moment, and which is not true, assume for a moment, that uh, you see the bulk of our bureaucracy comes from states which have not done well there. You know, if you look at the, e I don't want to name any state, but the economic indices of the states that they come from are far worse than JNK. Right now, they sit and come and give on us on development is something you know, very difficult to take. And even for a moment, let us assume that uh, JNK was not doing well. I'm assuming it was doing well. We were doing better. 
uh, the, the indicators will suggest that we're not as bad as they are making us. But is there a constitutional uh, a remedy in it? Is, does the constitution allow you to say that state A is not doing well, so I'm going to debar people from electing their own representatives and send a bunch of people from Delhi or from uh, other places to rule them? It's not constitutionally or legally valid. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, but uh, there's only a matter. All, it's only a matter of time before we move towards elections. Uh, it's only a matter of time, I think, before statehood is restored. Would like those two it, uh, demands change everything? Would the, yeah, if those two demands were met? Well, elections, assembly elections, they look like eternity. I don't see them happening very soon. But um, yeah, parliament elections they could hold if they hold. They could. Yeah, but. Um, no demands. You see, I'll tell you the demand for federalism, for greater power, that pitch, that thing will never cease. You know, uh, it will go on. And I don't think that this abrogation is the end of the world. Neither will this government stay there for eternity. They you don't, don't think the abrogation is the end of the world. You don't agree with the abrogation, but you don't think it's the end of the world. No, you you got me wrong. What I mean by end of the world is that I don't mean that is that that it is the closure of that. Uh, federalism structure. It can come back again. If not today, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. It could come back to the whole country. So I don't, I'm not a defeatist. I still believe that we have a strong challenge in the court. Right? I really think that there is a strong challenge. There are some things which I would not want to discuss. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a constitutional expert. But you don't need to be one. You know, I tweeted something late night and the next day almost similar observations came from Supreme Court. So you don't even need to be a lawyer to understand, you know, what 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 mistakes they might have made or might be making. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, when I say Article 370, I, it's an it's a matter, it's it's, it's 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 a matter of principle, it's a matter of belief. I believe in it. That in some form it will be back. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, you know, these things are not going to stay. Nothing is permanent in politics. The way we think that everything is gone Neither is, uh, you know, the other things, uh, you know, that they are talking about are, are permanent. But what happens is that, uh, you know, in five years, there is a certain thing that you can do. There is a certain amount of work that you can do. So when they roll out figures, when they dole out figures, you know, they also have to understand that they, it should be something which comes across as realistic. What all can you do in five years? Kitna hi kar Right? As I said, yes, law and order may, but it could be also because of the external dimension. Uh, wow. Internal wow. dimension, we hope. There must be some internal dimension also. You know, uh, as elected representatives in any part of India, you are, you have a lot of pulls and pressures on the society, you're a part of the society. But then you also have to understand that law and order uh, is, you can never bet, you know, the, 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 the life of good the the difference between good and bad law and order cannot be made out in one year or two years i am not being a pessimist i'm not saying that mm. but i wouldn't be surprised if it okay let we'll discuss that in a moment i i i i'm intrigued by your current uh, twitter bio uh, it calls yourself you call yourself currently unemployed right can we take the banner yeah. off and just see that just a second muted bystander currently unemployed once upon a time a politician in jk people's conference why once upon a time why unemployed okay muted bystander you said that you know you feel that you're just sitting back you're observing you're not saying much right now you don't want to say much right now why are you currently unemployed Nikki, i'll tell you we all you know all of us decided uh, whether by design, whether by destiny, to be a part of politics and say goodbye to some other things that we could have done in life. Maybe doff, maybe have a, be an entrepreneur or other things, you know, work somewhere. So, politics is one thing, so now we are taken, so unemployed. So, we are unemployed, we don't employ. And once upon a time, because what you have to understand, Barkha, is that the humiliation of the political class by the bureaucratic class in JNK has reached, you know, the levels that one could never imagine. That's why I say once upon a time. Because, you know, we don't, I personally don't call anybody, but people call us for some works that they might have, you know, they might have some work with us, they might need our intervention somewhere. And, you know, the bureaucrat looks at this political entity like a species in a zoo. What are you doing here? You know, that's the expression on their face. 
So that's why I said once upon a time. And it, what it means that there used to be politics in JNK once upon a time, which it is not. And uh, it's a very humiliating existence for the political class. They work over time to convince the people of JNK. And they have succeeded at us that all the wrongs was because of the polity of JNK. As if the polity in the rest of the country has been some sort of a big super success. And we have been bloody failures. Uh, you know, but mm. then that's how it is. There is media. The only... There is one point of view. The other one point of view is totally for you. Look at the news. Uh, if you look at the uh, news agencies, you should see. You know, it's it's it's. Uh, you won't find a Kashmiri or a Jammu name anywhere. You say that you feel humiliated. Not just you. You say across the, the political class. The political class, be it National Conference, Congress, and even the BJP. You know, they won't confess. All of them, and that's what is bound to happen when you have people who don't believe, who believe there are no elections, you know, no election hone ni, and you know. Uh, so you see, uh, for example, today convincing people to have uh, a talk about politics is difficult because they believe election hone ni kai ko ek sar kam hai. So hmm. let me ask you this: you, you had, I don't know how you describe it today, but first let's talk about the past. You had a good relationship with the Prime Minister. I have followed you on campaign trails where you described the Prime Minister to be your bada bhai, your elder brother. Uh, you, uh, for those of us who are Kashmir watchers, you uh, had, you know, a direct line to the National Security Advisor, Mr. Dobal. Uh, what, okay, okay, all right, all right. I won't say that, but you're on record saying that you called the Prime Minister an elder brother, correct? You remember that? I, mean, I have met the Prime Minister three times or four times in my entire life, right? And when I stepped out after meeting him, uh, they said that somebody said you have committed political suicide. Kisine kuch bola, kisine bola. How did he treat you? I said like an elder brother, and which was true. So, lagge mere piche isne bada bhai, bada bhai bola. So maybe now I'm not saying that. Usme kya achi baat hai? You're such a big deal. What's the big deal if somebody calls? But that's what happened. Nothing at all. Dekho parka ek baat pata do. Aapke Delhi mein uncle auntie bade hue hain, right? Who bat for the two big ones, right? Some but poor, two, two big ones, Sahib, you mean the Mufti? Hang on. Two big ones, you mean Muftis and, you, 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 and Abdullahs? You, ah. you see, the problem Achy. is that when someone likes me, like me, the poorer son of the soil, comes to Delhi, they see this as a domain, as a trespass. So then you have these things, close chief minister, foreign minister. Nobody ever asked them. Nobody ever asked them. You know, so, you know, this whole Ijo Kashmir ka problem hai, when you look at the past, to be very honest, apart from the governments that were in uh, power, who ensured that there has to be, it has to be, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, either A or either B. There was this huge so-called uh, secular media, liberal media. Unka bhi yehi tha, ki nahi bas yehi or koi nahi. So they come up with these things, ki nahi ji, abhi sa usko bada bhai bola. Abhi mein dekh raha hi, I said, no, he treated me like, aapka pehle aya tha na, isse pehle, ki isne bada bhai bola. Which I, I'm nothing wrong, I feel proud of that. I mean, say, I have met him three, four times. And to be very honest with you, whenever I went with any demand for development, you know, we, we had, a, in my handwara, there is a medical college today. There is a Bangus road. You know, it's, it's, it's grown. There is no doubt about it. You know, that when I was in, as a minister, that government, I really was able to... What, 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 you're suggesting, what you're suggesting is that the other parties also had direct lines with who they needed to call or dial on their hotlines uh, in government, but you were singled out for your association with the BJP and Prime Minister Modi. That's what you're saying. I once. once. I think once. I so you have a direct line. Tha. Mera direct line. Hai. Jiska hai, usko puch, meri direct line. Hai. Kiska hai direct I line? Kiska hai direct line? Kiska hai direct line? Kiska hai direct line? Achha, ek ne seriously baat karte hai. You, I, I know you're making the point about hypocrisy of the other parties. Uh, how would you, before we discuss the other parties, how would you describe your relationship with the BJP today? I ask this because you have been an ally. You have been an alliance with the BJP, as is Mehbooba Mufti, right? I'm not singling you out. I must... And Omar Abdullah. And Omar Abdullah. And Omar Abdullah. So both of these parties have uh, been partners of the BJP. And that is the point that you, have, you are underlining. That you single out, they don't talk about it. Point taken. Now, I'm going to ask you about it. Do you want to go back to 
बीजेपी के साथ पार्टनरशिप बना सकते हैं नेवर से नेवर इन पॉलिटिक्स बट व्हाट डू यू थिंक नो आई डोंट थिंक सो विद दिस ह्यूमिलिएशन एंड एवरीथिंग बट आई विल टेल यू समथिंग बेटर इन 2014 व्हेन रिजल्ट्स केम आउट इन दिसंबर इन एंड देन इन 2019 आई मेड एन एक्विजिशन that the first party to offer support to bjp was the nc and they didn't even reply ki bole who is it but then one of their top leaders left the party and he said i was sent for negotiations in 2014 the media didn't pick it up had it been a poor soul like me i would have been you know uh, hanged and i will tell you again in the next assembly election if and when they are held the first party to offer them support overtly or covertly Silently or openly would be the national conference. Yeah, yeah. You are you 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 are saying the first party to offer the BJP support will be the Abdullahs. No, I am saying in 2014 it was the Abdullahs, and whenever now, it's held, now, it will be them. It will be them. Yes. Why do you say that? The, Umar, the Umar, Umar is, Abdullah. Oh, hang on. Yes. Umar Abdullah walked with Rahul Gandhi in the Bharat Jodo when it came to Kashmir. Why do you say that? जब चुनाव होगा कभी जब होगा आपको लगता है national conference will be the first to reach out to the BJP. Why do you feel that? They they were they were they were in partnership with the Congress in 2014. So him walking with that Bharat Jodo thing it doesn't add anything. They were in partnership with Congress in 2014. Yet it did not stop them from offering support to BJP. Why would it stop them now? What you is your basis? You know, no, that's true. But what is? I mean, you know, I won't be surprised if it happens. Let's put it like that, uh, because I'm I'm trained now to say that nothing is impossible in politics. Would we have ever thought Mehbooba Mufti and the BJP could be in government? But why have you singled out the national conference? You you have all been in partnership with the BJP at different times. No, no, why no, no. do you believe today? Why do you believe today the NC will be the first? to offer the bjp support are you saying the nc and the bjp have been in secret talks no, i am not saying anything they might they might be they would be um, i wouldn't i would be very surprised that if they are not talking right but the point is that somebody who did something in 2014 can do it again in 19 or whenever mai wo keh raha hu that's what i'm saying is that you see the strategy is simple paint everybody as an ally of bjp you know and then go and sit with them this is the history of kashmiri politics aap achhi tarah se dekhega pichle 20 saal ka when it, in the context of bjp there is not a single party which has not said you vote me and i will not let them go in and then they have sat in their lap in the electoral lap who hasn't done it it was the same when they sat with them, when they uh, you know joined them in the union ministry and then um, um, even when the pdp thing came the only person who met the prime minister before the elections was me before the elections and i was in the government after the elections and today i am telling you i have nothing to do with them i was truthful then i am truthful now they were untruthful then and i have every reason to believe that they will be untruthful now that's what i am saying hmm. so let me ask you to give a truthful answer to my question could you ally there's umar abdullah walking with rahul gandhi you think that is a mean much if they have to switch to the can what i liked about it you know he is wearing sleeveless in winter and then umar saab is matching him wow that's really good and what does that tell, then, you? <laughs> what does that tell you what does that tell you what does that no no i don't want to make this as a um, you know tirade against nc or whatever so let's move on but i was just seeing the t-shirts it's uh do you like the t-shirts would you also want no, to wear no, a half sleeve and walk, the, march in the court the sleeveless i'm saying in the winters good very good let's come to the politics you said you're always truthful you say it as you see it you say it as you would do it could you ally with the bjp again if the no, no, time for your no, opportunity I, I, I presents no i don't think so no after what is is the mujhe kisi ka kuch nahi but the way they are humiliating us the people the political class ye nahi hota you can't throw bad bad crumbs it has to be with dignity kam khayenge gam nahi lenge it's something very old an old adage You know, you can't just come and say that by abhi karo, A is will teach you. You have to do like this. Oh, these bloody Kashmiris thieves! No, not at all. This is, uh, you know, this humiliation has to end. And and um, where do we go? Tell, हम जाएं किसके पास? पूछें किसको? मेरा यही तो सवाल है कि आप सरकार से बात नहीं करेंगे तो आप किससे बात करेंगे? 
you know, unse kya baat itna kar kar ke to ab you know. see the bigger problem is that you know somewhere uh, as i said we have to be responsible maybe in our utterances we might have hurt the people of india problem is ki jitna aap yahan marte ho utna vote bhi to wahan milte hain that's another big problem you see so that's why i think we need to shut up for some time and not at least when it comes to the people of india we just need to keep our mouths shut anything remotely connected to them which might incite them i think we need to keep quiet and anybody inciting them might be intentionally or intent unintentionally doing what the bjp would want them to do talking about keeping mouth shut uh, uh, somebody who did not uh, keep his mouth shut and did the exact opposite was the former governor uh, satyapal malik uh, he made all kinds of claims and allegations and the one thing that he said was that the prime minister he believed is not very well informed about what's happening uh, in kashmir uh, you know he's maybe not being briefed properly and so on you believe this to be wrong you actually believe it is your understanding that the prime minister has a very detailed understanding of what's happening in kashmir. me so talk a little bit about that whenever i met him i always found him very well informed very very well informed and it's not because because uh, you know some instances came up he knew every small bit of small incidents maybe at that well, like like have... like at what how small how no, how no, no, but, uh, but i should not divulge anything here uh, on the public space but reality is that even a small incident he described it discussed it and i even the names uh, I, i was rather surprised that he knew all, um, all these normally you don't expect um, uh, because especially bjp leaders given that bjp leaders don't have a lot of history in governing they don't have in governance they've been there for 10 15 20 years unlike the congress who had been there for decades and they would know names they would know the situation so i always found him very i didn't i didn't never feel you know for example at times we come and uh, have an interview where the interviewer doesn't know about kashmir to hum bhi gunge ho jate hain so daisa mujhe kabhi nahi laga ki main us insaan ke sath baitha hu jisko kashmir ki pata nahi i always found that this guy this person in front of me knows a lot about kashmir uh, what did you sense was his vision for kashmir is his stated vision hey, teen baar mila hu char baar mujhe vision malum pade mujhe <laughs> but, uh, but... पर आपके कुछ तो इम्प्रेशंस होंगे व्हाट वर दोस इम्प्रेशंस फ्रॉम दैट मीटिंग आई एज आई टोल्ड यू इट्स बीन अ लॉन्ग टाइम बट ऑफ कोर्स एज अ कश्मीरी इट वाज ऑलवेज मेंट यू ऑलवेज सेड यू नेवर सेड दैट यू नो एनीथिंग बैड अबाउट कश्मीर और कश्मीरी आई ऑलवेज फाउंड हिम टू बी सॉर्ट ऑफ वेल मीनिंग लेकिन अभी जो हो रहा है इज समथिंग यू नो एंड ब्रदर सरप्राइज्ड has the government reached out to you through back channels and i mean i know that i'm asking you this question and i know that as a, you can't answer you it know, even if it's true see, this government this government feels they have won this guy and i don't know who they have defeated <laughs> you can't obviously defeat your own people the kashmiris are their own people they are a part of india so they think they have won they vanquished everybody so vanquishers don't need to talk to anybody. when you say this government feels they have won perhaps what you mean is that they have executed one of their old manifesto slogans they have executed it they have implemented it and they have not had to face anything negative as a consequence instead instead they are arguing as they are in the supreme no, court no 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 ki jo hua wo theek hua i am not talking of that they are basically not saying it what they imply is that we have shown the kashmiri his place or her place Hmm. that's the whole thing that we have shown his him or her their place ke job ab dekh le so you have this so called kashmiri ki federalism mein mera bada naam hai mera bada special hai and now we are a ut so that's you know as humiliating as it can get hmm. so wo but let's hai, talk a, but let's talk about the national security angle that might make this a different debate from th- you know federalism in himachal pradesh right uh, there is pakistan uh, there is the pakistan dimension there is the pakistan pushing in of uh, terrorists from the lashkar e taiba from the jaish e mohammed there is pakistan fishing in troubled waters trying to recruit uh, local uh, young men educated men into their into the into militant groups as somebody and again i say public memory is short 
as somebody who, when your father was assassinated, and as a journalist, I'll never forget it because I saw him being killed. I was in Kashmir on that day. I can never forget it for as long as I live. When Abdul Ghani Lone is assassinated, you, not in the mainstream of politics, then come out and say, the deep state of Pakistan is responsible for the assassination of my father. My question to you is, as someone who experienced that, how do you ignore the fact that there is a Pakistan dimension to any debate around Kashmir, including the federalism one? Nee, Aap, I will tell you something. There is no doubt that there is a certain section in Kashmir which is either secessionist in nature or maybe Pakistani in nature. Ek element to hai. But the element which is fighting them is also Kashmiri. Aapka Jomu Kashmir police to Muslimanu se bara hua hai. The Kashmiri Muslim. They are sacrificing their lives. So, आप ये रिकॉग्नाइज करना चाहते हैं कि भाई कुछ मिलिटेंट या टेररिस्ट जो हैं उनसे मिले हुए हैं लेकिन जो आपके हमारी आपके देश का जंग लड़ रहे हैं उनको आप रिकॉग्नाइज ही नहीं करना चाहते हैं हाउ क्रूल इजंट ही मोर इंडियन देन एन एवरेज इन एन अदर स्टेट बिकॉज़ ही इज रेंडरिंग सैक्रिफाइस ऑफ द सुप्रीम सैक्रिफाइस ऑफ हिज लाइफ फॉरगेट गिविंग हिम सम सॉर्ट ऑफ एक्स्ट्रा रिस्पेक्ट यू नॉट इवन विलिंग टू यू नो एक्नॉलेज इट how petty can it get? You really think that the Jawan, that the JNK police wala, of course the Jawans, the army, other, who render their sacrifices, are they less than anybody in the rest of the country? No, of course not. But who has said that? The government has not said that. But the way you deal with Kashmiris <laughs> makes the temple time how they, uh, you know, uh, how much respect they have for them. The JK police, the Jammu and Kashmir make, light, light make, infantry, make, there are long make, lines of people recruiting, you know, wanting to join the police in the army. Percent, look here, I'll tell you something. And now don't hold that. And, but 60% of the graves with bullets, with Pakistani bullets, if 100 people died since 1989, 60 to 70% are with Pakistani bullets. Out of those, 90% are Kashmiri Muslims. So go down and go to their graves and tell them, Congrats, we have made you a UT. I don't think, I mean, I don't think this is the respect that you show towards Martins. It's in deeds. Words me ta bohat karte ki jnaab ho kar diya. In deeds what you do. The Home Minister is on record to say that the statehood of Jammu and Kashmir will be restored. If that happens, if that happens, will that take away some of the angst, you think? Some of the cynicism? It's good. It should happen. And why shouldn't there be a for such a big state? You know, you can't center can't. Uh, meri baat suni, it's not about Kashmir. I don't know why journalists there are not able to see through it. Aapka problem pure mulk mein hoga. This, you know, this UT thing could be a stick to beat anybody. I won't speak more than that, but baaki aapko is research kar le. Aap mujhe ye bataye ki if elections are announced. Assembly, I don't mean Lok Sabha, I mean Assembly elections. Is that something that you see yourself participating in with full gusto? Do you see yourself embracing electoral <laughs> politics in the way that you once did? Assembly or Parliament? Either, both. Of course we'll fight, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we'll come out of unemployment and try to get employed and the, with the people, whether they give us a job or not. But yes, of course we will, certainly. We will... Uh, we're ready for elections, yeah. you know. Look, one thing is that, you know, uh, uh, but I'm 55 plus now. You know, you see me when I was in Pakistan getting married. There is not a lot of uh, fuel left to go on. But then uh, I think, if not me, somebody else, maybe National Conference, maybe PDP, maybe Congress, maybe BJP, people deserve here yeah, to have representatives as an MLA, as other things. Now we will say this, that we have made a panchayat, a sarpanch, and they don't give the officers to get inside. You know, they mm -hmm. make them wait for hours. So you really think that somebody, that they will do his work. We didn't do it when we were a MLA or a mantri. So they would make us, you know, go around in circles. So what do they do? So people of JNK actually deserve that they have a representative. Ek, ek rehta hai ki bhai, you know, we, we, we are not very highly developed country. We still need interventions. State, any government is not so efficient that you don't need intervention. You need some facilitation. Ye kya hota hai? Mbele kya hota hai? Ye facilitators hota hai. So once you leave them, jo ab bureaucrat hota hai, he puts in X number of years, he gets promoted. 
एमएलए का वो नहीं है ही हैज टू वर्क हार्ड एंड देन गेट री इलेक्टेड एवरी टाइम सो ही इज मोर कीन टू लिसन टू पीपल्स यू नो टू टू सॉर्ट ऑफ बी मोर रिस्पॉन्स टू पीपल्स डिमांड्स दैन वुड ब्यूरोक्रेट नथिंग रॉन्ग इन अ ब्यूरोक्रेट बट दैट्स हाउ देयर सिस्टम इज यू यू हैव अपोज्ड the land for landless scheme you're among the parties and the politicians in kashmir who've raised questions about this now we must juxtapose this uh, with the way that uh, we are seeing non kashmiri pandits of course but also non locals who have come in uh, from other parts of the country targeted uh, and repeatedly by terrorists uh, this scheme is meant to help you know those who have no land why what are your concerns about it? Nee, nee, main, I'm not against land to landless, and I don't believe that there are no homeless people in Kashmir. There are many homeless people. If uh, if ten family members are living in two rooms, they are homeless. In in my, I would define them as homeless. So I don't live in a in a different world to say there are no landless people. There are homeless people. There are landless people, and it's a genuine concern that it should be given to those people who've been living here for decades, for ages. So uh, if you sort of uh, create uh, you know sort of a ghetto of people who are don't belong to this place you are basically this is a post dated check for disaster uh, a mm. different conflict at a different date in the future this should not be done in any state forget uh, jnk why in any state why would you do that there why would you do why would you take kashmiris from here and get them settled uh, uh, in some other uh, for example in some other state so wo acha nahi hai why would you do that why would anybody come here but just creating this uh, i am sure nobody would want to come why would anybody want to leave his or her home and come and settle in a jammu or in a kashmir give them land in their own states they would want to be there they would love to have but there is the internal there. migration there are daily wage workers who come to delhi they leave their villages they have better opportunity they come to kashmir for the same reason they they you know agar inki sensitivities hai agar saath ka himachal zameen hi khareedne deta hai agar ye bolte hain to kya problem hai isme hamans will not fall ये कौन सा इतना बड़ा कोई समंदर है इट्स नॉट अ दुबई और अ मुंबई और अ दिल्ली वेयर देयर इज ह्यूज इकोनॉमिक गेन्स टू बी मेड देयर इज अ ह्यूज एम्प्लॉयमेंट वी हैव यू नो ह्यूज एन एम्प्लॉयमेंट हियर ऑन आवर ओन सो ऐसा नहीं है दैट इट्स सम सॉर्ट ऑफ ओएसएस ऑफ इकोनॉमिक प्रोस्पेरिटी व्हाई वुड एनीबडी कम हियर सो मैं वो नहीं आई हैव सेंसिटिविटीज आई पर्सनली लुक आई एम अ वेरी सॉर्ट ऑफ and cosmopolitan in nature i don't have problem but my people have problems we talk to people they believe that this should not happen and then we are so we are so many landless and homeless here aap unko de dijiye baad mein dekhiye agar koi bahar se aata hai why are you so keen on uh, getting people to logon ko shak pad jata hai in the context of forget kashmir na jammu mein nahi hai jammu mein problem hai you know it's not a kashmiri kashmiri problem anymore hmm Let, let me ask you in the end uh, you know detention uh, you were among those uh, who were uh, taken into de- detention in the immediate aftermath of uh, the abrogation of 370 uh, how did that change you it was of course not your first brush with this but how did it change you how are you today instead of having a meta discussion on how kashmir has changed or not changed after 370 let's ask how has sajad loan changed after the abrogation of 370 and everything you experienced in the immediate aftermath नहीं मुझे कुछ चेंज नहीं हुआ आई मीन इट इट वाज वाज अ वेरी कंफर्टेबल स्टेट ऐसा नहीं है दैट इट वाज सम सॉर्ट ऑफ अ जेल व्हिच वाज थोड़ा था वे बट टू बी इफ यू रियली आस्क मी यू नो इफ आई हैव शेड एनी टीयर्स आई हैव शेड इट फॉर इंडिया नॉट फॉर माय सेल्फ व्हाई यू कांट इन टर्न एन एंटायर पॉलिटिकल क्लास एंड हैव द होल कंट्री यू नो क्लैपिंग फॉर यू दैट्स बैड That's well we look yeah it's been a very very big cataclysmic uh, moment and the supreme court will be keenly watched for uh, for what it eventually decides and even how even the process of hearing the the good part is sajad that all of these are live streamed everybody can actually see what is said in court who says what uh, and uh, you know uh, the fact is i i i should ask you before we close two of the original petitioners in this case have withdrawn from the petition shah faisal uh, the, the the topper of the uh, sort of ias uh, who, who in whose name uh, this original petition was has actually not just withdrawn from the petition he's gone back to the ias uh, any any thoughts on that i think we should let him live in peace may god bless him uh, he is a wonderful kid who has done uh, as great help you know who has done wonders for kashmir he has topped the ias 
he's our pride and he is very good in IS. My best wishes to him. And Shaila, the other girl you didn't name, again, a very Shaila bright Rashid. girl. Very, yes, very yes. bright girl. I wish her all the best. If they want to retract, it's their own personal opinion. And I think it's time we let them live in peace. All right, Sajad, thank you, you so the best much. We, thank we you. hope you change your Twitter bio soon or have the opportunity and the context to change your Twitter bio soon. Uh, from bada bada uh, no, currently unemployed to so busy I can't breathe. That should be everybody's Twitter bio. Uh, thank you very much. Take care and see you soon. Take care. Bye -bye. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.